Hi everybody and welcome back to Insight. So I've been thinking a lot about the Gatwick drone incident and one of the things that really has not been explained very well and hasn't really been discussed a lot is the fact that so many people apparently saw the drone flying over the Gatwick runway even though there is absolutely no empirical evidence to support that there was a drone. For example, there were no photographs, there was no video really to speak of. So the question I have is how is it possible that so many people saw the drone or drones even though apparently none exists? Now recently the Sussex Police Chief Constable Giles York confirmed that there had been 115 reports of drone sightings to police. And of these 115 reports, 93 were confirmed as coming from credible sources such as law enforcement and air traffic employees. There were two drones found near the airport, but they were ruled out as being involved in the incident. And the police searched around the airport as well, and they found that there was nothing really there. They checked 26 sites, but they really didn't find anything new to support the idea that there was a drone. So, in other words, at this time, there is no real physical evidence that there ever was a drone flying over the Gatwick runway. But this brings up the question, if this is the case, if a drone might never have existed, how is it possible to explain the 115 sightings that were reported? Did these people lie? Were they deliberately lying and trying to confuse the police? Did they make a mistake? Or maybe there was something else going on. Is it possible that maybe something more interesting and more subtle is at play that may provide an explanation? So in this video, I'm going to offer a theory as to what I think may be at the root of the numerous sightings of a drone or drones that apparently don't exist. So if you want to know what I think, stay tuned and I'll be right back. So welcome back. Okay, now before I give you my theory as to what I think might be going on, I just need to tell you that what I'm going to be talking about here is pure speculation. I'm going to be referencing some psychological theories, but I am not a trained psychologist. I'm not a professional. Um, so any references that I make about psychology, well, it's just from my own readings and from my own studies. I'm not pretending to know a lot about this. So take my theories with a, gr a grain of salt. Uh, don't uh, give me a lot of hate over it. Uh, I am just putting this forward as a possibility, a perspective that I have. All right. So... Basically, ever since the Gatwick drone incident, I've been intrigued. I've been intrigued by the fact that there were numerous reported sightings of a drone over Gatwick, but there is absolutely no evidence to support these sightings. The two people who were suspected of flying the drone and arrested and detained for 36 hours were eventually released because it was found that they had absolutely nothing to do with the incident. Okay, so here's my theory on how these numerous and unsubstantiated sightings might be explained. Could it be that these reported sightings are an example of a phenomenon which is well documented in history known as mass hysteria? Possibly mixed in with a bit of groupthink? Let me just give a brief definition of mass hysteria. 
Mass hysteria is a condition affecting a group of persons characterized by excitement or anxiety, irrational behavior or beliefs, or inexplicable symptoms of illness. Let me just go over a number of examples of mass hysteria throughout history. Now, I have to say that this is a phenomenon that is really fascinating. And from what I've read and understand, this phenomenon of mass hysteria is really not fully understood. And by the way, the idea of hysteria, or when you call somebody uh, hysterical, it's not a compliment. But in this case, the word hysteria is not used in a pejorative way. People who suffer from mass hysteria are really expressing a psychological uh, manifestation. It's not a derogatory word or anything like that. So if you call somebody hysterical or suffering from mass hysteria, you're simply describing a psychological phenomenon. And there's really no judgment uh, involved whatsoever, even though the word hysterical over the years has taken on uh, some negative connotations. So one example of mass hysteria that most people are familiar with revolves around the Salem witch trials that took place between 1692 and 1693. It began when two young girls of the small town of Salem Village began to experience seizures that were not explained by contemporary medical science. After their seizures, the girls proclaimed that they were being assaulted by supernatural entities conjured up by local women. Soon, more girls were being afflicted and more townspeople, mostly female, were being accused of being witches. Trials were promptly enacted and those women who did not confess were sentenced to death. Now, ironically, those who falsely confessed did not face execution. In the end, more than 20 people were executed and more than 100 were jailed before common sense was restored. Later, medical scientists would lay the blame on everything from stress caused by ongoing warfare with American Indians to fungus on bread products. Another example of mass hysteria is known as the Halifax Slasher. This took place in 1938 in the town of Halifax, England, a town in West Yorkshire. Beginning in November 1938, reports were made to the police regarding a man attacking people, mostly women, with a mallet or knife. The number of alleged attacks grew to such a number that Scotland Yard was called in to help the Halifax police. The police soon became suspicious of what looked like self-inflicted wounds on the victims. Soon enough, a number of those claiming to have been attacked admitted that they had faked their own encounters with the phantom perpetrator. In early December, a local newspaper wrote that, quote, the theory that a half-crazed, wild-eyed man has been wandering around, attacking helpless women in dark streets, is exploded. There never was, nor is there likely to be, any real danger to the general public. Another fascinating example of mass hysteria is the Tanzania laughter epidemic of 1962. This happened in late January of 1962 at an all-girls school in Kashasha, Tanzania. Three girls began to laugh uncontrollably. Bizarrely, the laughter spread until more than 90 students were laughing for no apparent reason. The laughing fits allegedly lasted anywhere from a few hours to more than 15 days. Its cause remains unknown. The laughter episodes continued on and off for about one year and then mysteriously ceased. The next and final example of mass hysteria is the most controversial, as there are a lot of people who still believe that what happened reflects a real miracle. Now, I'm not here to dissuade anyone who believes in the authenticity of this event, but for the purpose of my argument, I'm going to approach the event in a more naturalistic manner and assume that it can be explained as a form of mass hysteria. The event that I'm talking about is often called the Miracle of the Sun or the Miracle of Fatima. This event is claimed to have occurred on October 13, 1917. It was attended 
by a large crowd who had gathered in Fatima, Portugal in response to a prophecy made by three shepherd children. The prophecy was that the Virgin Mary, referred to as Our Lady of Fatima, would appear and perform miracles on that date. Newspapers published testimony from reporters and other people who claimed to have witnessed extraordinary solar activity, such as the sun appearing to dance or zigzag in the sky, careen towards the earth, or emit multicolored light and radiant colors. According to these reports, the event lasted approximately 10 minutes. As can be expected, there was a lot of skepticism around the claim that these events happened. Science writer Benjamin Radford argued that, quote, the sun did not really dance in the sky. We know this because, of course, everyone on Earth is under the same sun. And if the closest star to us suddenly began doing celestial gymnastics, a few billion other people would surely have reported it. So how does all this relate to the drone sighting at Gatwick Airport? Well, given the fact that as of this moment, there is no evidence whatsoever of an actual drone, and yet at least 115 people claim to have seen a drone, might it be possible that what happened at Gatwick is an example of mass hysteria? Mass hysteria is something that happens to people when they are under a lot of stress. This was Christmas time. People were gearing to get away. They were hungry. They were tired. They were trying to get somewhere as quickly as possible. People's minds are extremely complicated and they're very malleable and suggestible. There is so much going on in our culture right now against drones that it's not entirely surprising that when people hear that a drone is sighted over the runway that maybe they will see a drone and you know people feed off each other which means that if one person thinks that there's a drone and then another person thinks that there's a drone and then a third person thinks that there's a drone there's a kind of vibe that happens that's in the air and then you know people see things and then their mind thinks that what they're looking at is a drone even though they're not it may be something else it may be that they're confused but the first thing that comes to mind is oh what i'm seeing over there is a drone again we know that the mind is extremely complicated and quite suggestible it's not unheard of that people see what they want to see or what they expect to see in any given situation and there is so much now um, that is against drones so many people have biases against drones and they think the worst of drones that it's not completely unreasonable to imagine that people who heard that the airport had come to a stop because of an apparent drone sighting we're more inclined to see a drone even if there wasn't one there. This is the power of suggestion. It is something that we can all fall prey to. What this means, of course, is that the people who claimed that they saw a drone actually believed that they saw it, even though there's no evidence currently that they actually saw a drone. And Gatwick Airport, at the height of the Christmas holiday, was ripe for this kind of thing, since the essential ingredients for mass hysteria include being under psychological and physical stress, being hungry, being tired, or both, which would be a fairly common thing at an airport at this time of year. So what do you think? Was the Gatwick drone incident an example of mass hysteria? Or is there another explanation? Leave your comments below and please don't forget to subscribe as well as hit the notification bell for information when new videos are released. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.